Hi, today I am interviewing Rems. Uh, a legendary stamina step artist, uh, primarily known for uh, the Eurobeat is Fantastic uh, series, but also does a whole bunch of other shit. Welcome, Rems. Hey, nice to have me on the show, I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jeremy. How are you doing? Uh, I just, uh, this is the first time I've been asked a question. <laughs> uh, I'm doing great. <laughs> Because everyone, everyone doing? ask, everyone ask, you know, what is Jeremy doing? But no, no one never asks, how are you doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true, no one cares. It's so sad. Doing great. Doing great. Uh, lockdown currently in effect here. Lots of time to uh, work on personal projects. So, yeah, mm -hmm. trying to make the best, uh, the best out of these uh, train times, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, the, they're, they're pretty miserable. But, you know, the vaccines are getting rolled out, so hopefully... Let's hope you know, for that. Let's hope for it. So, um, how'd you... Tell, tell us about... Give us give us a background of your dance game career thus far. Little little it, summary. It's been a very long story. Like, I, I've told people a few times before, and uh, people usually don't expect my backstory to go this far, but, like, I'm currently 27, and I live in France, like, uh, in the north of France, but uh, our story begins a little south, and uh, we were, I think, 26 or something, like, really, really back then. Um, I... Uh, I was, you know, browsing the internet like everyone was doing like during their teenage years. I was uh, maybe 14 at the time and uh, some way, somehow, I, uh, I found a website called Flash Flash, Flash Revolution, right? Uh, most, oh, most, I love Flash yeah. Flash Revolution. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that was... Uh, an era definitely and i stumbled upon this uh website and i was um you know i was hooked i i, I liked the game and i was trying to figure out uh if i can if i could you know get good at it it, it has uh it had good music for me at the time because i was you know just mm -hmm. like starting to be in the process of um listening to lots of stuff and uh trying to build my uh, understanding of music so and then what really you know started things for me was there was a video uh, 27 uh, 27 yeah I, I think it was HG World Cup Finals Lil Q versus Damien like to win oh. an ITG free uh, daddy cab yeah, I think I watched that's... that vid like a hundred times that's a classic vid. Yeah, no, like not a lot of people know about this one because it's fairly old, and I don't even know if it's still online. But it's I don't know. I actually watched McCall. I, I played at the same arcade. Uh, little Q played at actually. Oh yeah, nice. That that was yeah, no, I, that was the start kind of for dick. me because I was looking at these guys and be like, oh, that is looking so cool. I I really want to do it. So I doubled down on Flash Flash Revolution, created an account, and uh, played some more. I played for a few years, uh, but I couldn't get to a proper arcade because you know I was 14, 15 at the time, and my parents would never drive like to the only place um, a machine was at. It was something something like a hundred kilometers away, so that doesn't sound far. Um, if you're talking about that's, America, that's a lot. That's a lot. But I mean, that's a lot for, for like, a, parents, you know, just a day trip. For my parents uh, at the time being like, oh my god, look at these cool dudes on video. I want to do the same thing. Let's drive to, like, the arcade. Let's drive for two hours to go to the only place I can play this game. So I never asked. So oh, I, I, was oh no. I was just playing FFR. And then maybe 20, maybe 2008... Like, I started looking at uh, Stepmania 3.9 at the time, and I installed the game, and then I installed the In The Groove 2 theme that was around at the time, you know, the bootlegs that were around. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, great theme. And I, and I played a lot. Like, I made my own selection of the In The Groove officials, which might explain why I'm only good at certain ITG officials, but not the other ones. <laughs> 
because like i selected the music that i liked and then the other ones i just you know straight to the trash you know i was oh. 16 i didn't care so. they didn't and, care they didn't care yeah. about uh wanna do or whatever Nah, i i only kept the good ones so yeah, yeah. It, it's like i was in my world i had no idea of um what was the world like for dance games outside of you know my little bubble and my and my home so i played the game for a few years maybe like 2009 something then i stopped because i lost interest i picked up other games mm -hmm. and i played other stuff so um you know i was just um thinking about how I would never pick up the game again and uh, how that phase of my life was over. But um, yeah, some way, somehow, 2013, I, I look at, um, you know, uh, I was in vacations. I was in the South of France, there was a big arcade and they had um, dancing stage fusion. Like the, oh. the types oh, of yeah, cats. dancing stage. The yeah, types of cat Europe. that you don't see that often in the U.S. I don't. I don't even think they're. I think they exist, but in a, under a different name. They're not named Dancing Stage. They're named like DDR or something. But it was yeah, like the a, DDR or something. Whatever yeah. you Americans call it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's DDR. <laughs> I mean, we had we had few. You know, Euromix went into Dancing Stage Fusion, all that kind of stuff, and um, I, I I played like around because my parents wanted to go, and I was like, oh my god. You, you cannot understand how long I waited to play this game for real. <laughs> like I did a few like freeze free free foot passes on that thing. It was it was horrible. Oh. Thinking back about oh, yeah. it, it was it was garbage. Funny thing, mm -hmm. um, I came back like three years after that, and they they sold the machine and they got an X two, but you know the bad kinds with the credit pads and all that. Oh no! I played again there, and it was I was way better, but the the setup was still garbage. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I played on this machine, and then I was like, oh my god, I need to pick up the game again. So I I, I download Stick Mania, and then I try to you know think about what 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 I could do. So I I downloaded the ITG two theme again. It was called Groove something something whatever, but uh, and then I played the game again, and then. Yeah uh like i forgot but i moved uh like in 2012 i moved to lille in the north of france and 2013 an arcade is opening in my town i'm like yeah great i love arcades what what kind of game do they have and they had ddr mm -hmm. supernova and i was like oh my god they have oh, ddr supernova <laughs> So Move over for supernova oh yeah and and then uh i was there uh, and I saw the cab and it was like a magical moment. I, I had I had waited my entire life basically to have an available cab right next to me that I can play on the weekends. So I started going on the weekends. Every weekend. Like all the nice. Saturdays from uh, 2 p.m. to like 6 p.m. Four hours playing DDR, DDR, DDR all day. And... 2015, the arcade was kind of profitable, so they bought an ATG machine. They bought uh, an ATG machine from Silverstone in the Netherlands. They had four of those, and uh, my arcade oh, wow. bought one of those. I think it was an absurd price, like 8 or 9k euros. Oh, yeah. So, oof. It was in perfect yeah, no, shape. It was, it was perfect shape. What year was this? What year was this? 2015. 2050. Oh wow, yeah, no, that's impressive. Summer 2015, to be precise, and uh, yeah, uh, so they bought one, and uh, we played ITG officials for a while. Then uh, you know we, we as in you know the local players, we we started mm -hmm. you know hacking songs in, into the machine, and then finally good. someday I, I'm going to the to the owner who's now a very good friend of mine, I, I, and I just say you know yeah. This game is basically like ten year old now. Can can we do something different? Like install Step Mini or Open ATG or whatever. And then he does it mm. and then, you know, it's it's the start. Then after that, you know, French Goose, I mean one, two and all kinds of different stuff. But he started awesome. you know very grassroots, um, 
me at home playing stuff, my parents thinking I'm I'm dumb for playing these dumb music games and all that. And then, oh man, I get the same thing. Yeah, but yeah. like you should, right you now, see what my brother says about the game. <laughs> <laughs> my parents were very negative about the game in general, and uh, I forgive them now. But um, I really wish they could have done more, you know, to get me to experience the game beforehand. Because, mind you, it was um, twenty sixteen when I twenty fifth, yeah, twenty thirteen when I started the game, which means I was twenty, and I knew the game since I was fourteen. Ugh. Yeah. So that sucks. That is that's six years. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's basically how it started. Um, it's a backstory that not a lot of people know because they really don't talk about it because people always expect me to be like some kind of new kid on the block when I, I was playing, you know, exciting high high speed star, like spread charts back in 28 or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 another thing. Um, I'm I'm actually like relatively, I like, guess, old in that sense too. But I didn't start interacting with the community until I was like twenty three, twenty four, or something like that. So there's like ten years of um, stuff like that. But that's that's very interesting. So then you're you're a part of the. Are you the only community in France around this, uh, around ITG? That's kind of weird, because um, we're like um, split around different parts of the country. And there's parts that don't mm -hmm. talk to each other at all, because there's people that um, play at um, Stunfest, which is um, the most um, prominent uh, versus fighting tournament in the country. And people play DDR there. There's always a DDR tour tournament, and there always has been mm -hmm. for like twenty years. I don't even know, but it started. They started on. Uh, PS One mixes with soft mass, so it's it's like oh, wow. really fucking old. And uh, I'd never met those people, like, okay. and they never expressed the interest of uh, talking with uh, other people. But then, you know, back uh, when I wasn't in, in the community, there was like some associations and there were, you know, really big conflicts between them. There was, there were like in the north, west, south, there were tons of them and they were uh, organizing their own tournaments. And um, it wasn't really friendly, you know, they, they used to trash each other for no reason. And uh, th so the scene was very split. But then 2012, okay. everything died out because people lost interest in the game or whatever. But uh, back at that time, people already had um, cabs at home or cabs they bought. So a few people already had mm -hmm. cabs and small communities hovering around those. That's how it went. Uh, people had cabs, so people went to play uh, at these cabs. So small local communities uh, were created around these cabs. But then these mm -hmm. cabs were sold, so the community just vanished. The little player remained. And now we have uh, a few select spots where you can play. Uh, uh, my arcade is the only one where you can have... Uh, the proper, you know, modern ITG experience uh, in a public environment. But there's few private mm -hmm. cabs that are owned around the country, and uh, more or less, there's like 15 to 20 active players right now. It used to be like 100 or 150, but uh, it all changed really quickly when the scene died out in 2012 because of, you know, a lot of history with the toxic people, toxic communities and all that so it wasn't very good to see but i arrived like right after that i uh i never witnessed anything uh like that but you can you can always search uh to see what uh the golden days of france look like um there is the, that um association that was called slippers hurricane they, they organized like the biggest one of the biggest tournaments in europe uh SH Summer okay. Speed, SH Summer whatever. There were there were tons of tournament mm -hmm. with the um, international attendance. Like back in twenty twelve, people were ninety nining uh, Moon Earth V one. Like, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, really? If you if oh. um, and that's you know, so, that's, honestly, that's still pretty, pretty, pretty impressive by today's yeah, standards. Yeah, yeah, it's really impressive. Uh, people don't know about it, but in Europe, in like back in the twenty tens, we had like uh italian players that were world class some of some of i think one of those 
uh, did get to Burp Apocalypse at some point, but I don't remember who. Maybe it was GG or Jackson, I don't know. But, like, um, these people were really, really strong, but there were no uh, presence overseas. I don't know why, but, yeah. Basically, we oh. had a few communities in France in, you know, from 2006 to 2012. Then everything vanished, and then some cabs were bought, some new cabs were available, so people gathered around it. And then we built mm -hmm. something else, something new. Uh, on these cabs, you know, around these cabs with the people that were interested in game. So yeah, uh, here in Lille we have uh, the only public one and there's like maybe like seven or eight active players in the in the region. But yeah. Um, that's pretty good. That, yeah, that's, that's okay-ish. But yeah, in Paris we got more like um, 20 to 30 people. But yeah, um, these days the scene is like stopped completely because uh, there's no way to play the game right now like oh yeah especially because uh yeah, yeah. go because the arcade's probably not open right yep and the uh, private yeah. home cabs uh they're you know it's not <laughs> a place you especially want to go when we're in the pandemic or whatever but, yeah be yeah, like oh hey you know uh this <laughs> thing that gets transferred by breathing uh oh, let me come to your house and breathe yeah. all over <laughs> <laughs> casually you know <laughs> yeah just casual breathing yeah that totally makes sense but yeah the uh, situation you know, basically the answer to the question is uh it's complicated no we're not the only one here in little but um there's not much of us left basically <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's it so then i guess how do you like uh do do y'all interact much with the like surrounding uh like the european community yeah we do we do a lot actually i do a lot i don't know for the other people but um i really do a lot like uh if you if you take other people or the famous uh famously known people from the community like okami and maybe skating mars uh we have um uh, some people interacting with the global community uh, if you want a big example of that, um, Celine, uh, that is the owner of one of the private cabs in France, uh, she helped organize Girl Apocalypse 2019, I think. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of people from overseas and uh, a lot of people from Europe. Not a lot of people from Europe, actually, but a lot of people from you know America, Canada and all that, they, mm -hmm. that went to the tournament. So yeah, we have quite a few members that have uh, international... Um, uh, communication with people from other countries uh, for me i i really liked people from spain people from the netherlands people from uk from finland mm -hmm. from uh, sweden russia all, all uh yeah lots of nice people in europe really really i really yeah, appreciate everywhere. the contacts that i have with those people so um, i don't think it's the very people I... yeah i don't think it's very well known but like European community is very welcoming and uh, uh, yeah they do they do pretty pretty awesome stuff if you if you've never been to um, a Nordic Cup or uh, a Finland tournament uh, they do things pretty well uh, everything's mm -hmm. like not much delays usually lots of stuff uh, developed for the tournament only in that kind of things but you know really uh, catering to to the players, yeah, I really appreciate um, my contacts uh, with uh, other European people. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, no, that's yeah. very cool. Uh, yeah, everyone I met at StamCon uh, that you know made the trip over overseas mm -hmm. very nice. You know, very friendly. So that was uh, really cool. You can always say you know we are dedicated because a trip to the <laughs> U.S. isn't exactly cheap, <laughs> and it's it. You know, going to Washington isn't exactly easy, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> for yeah. the people that went there, uh, yeah, usually we're very, you know, dedicated and uh, very nice yeah. people. Like, because, yep. you know, these days, uh, if you're not around for the people, then what are you around for, really? Because the game is, like, yeah. pretty much figured out, and uh, it's not that it's getting stale, but, you know, people have been playing it for... 10 years or something so if you're not in there's people, stragglers then... there's definitely stragglers that are just kind of like hiding out in the outskirts on their own home pads or like mm -hmm. maybe they have a dedicab and they just kind of do their own sure. thing and don't talk to anybody 
Which is which is cool. I mean, like if you're if you're watching this, talk to us. Come on, let's hang out. Yeah, <laughs> like that def- time. <laughs> definitely, I I uh, had an internship in Madrid for like six months, and uh, I met the, the the Spanish community. There was like maybe five or six people interested in the game, but we had we had fun time, and uh, these people are among my best friends right now. So it's everything's great. I really like my uh, dense game family or. Yeah, whatever yeah, that's no, called. It's, it, it's awesome. Look, it's, it's really cool to just like go to some random place and like kind of like send out a message and be like, hey, who's here that does and, dance games? And we're not hang? talking like um, parasocial relationship when you know you got a certain level of you know famous. You're being kind of famous in the community, so people are going to you being like, oh, I know you from the internet. You're in this video and all that. We're talking about um, sharing specific moments with people that uh, you know outside of dance games we can relate to. Yeah, dan- dance game clout means nothing in, in this mean, community. I, I mean, mean, like it's it's a thing, but like everyone's still really approachable. It's a right? thing, but you have to remember, people are. Some people <laughs> were afraid of approaching me, and I'm like, you know, it's just a game. We're under like two thousand people worldwide playing this game, so. <laughs> Yeah, they're famous <laughs> to like a thousand people at most. You yeah, know? And, and you know, it, it's also like um, the communities are so split that, uh, you know, to be fair, I don't even know if I'm that famous in the FA community, for example. I don't I even think, know. I'm I think I would known. assume they know who you are. Yeah, I think people oh, know I who I am, say. but... Um, FA players, who is this guy? In the, in the <laughs> comments. In, in, engagement. <laughs> I mean, not to blame them, because it's not a community that I interacted with a lot, but I enjoy playing FA uh, from time to time, because I feel like it's an interesting and valid, uh, different approach uh, approach of the game. And that's, it, you know, it's, um, not all the people do that, but uh, mm-hmm. I do, and I like it. So, that, you know, that's you know, something that shouldn't be said uh, at this point in time, but... Just, you know, play yeah. what you enjoy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really weird because, like, before FA used to be, like, the standard type of playing, but now, like, I, I'm meeting more and more, like, stamina people who don't play FA at all. Like, they just don't. Uh, like, you give them an 11 that's tech, and they're like, I'm going to get, like, an 84 on it. Uh, but I could pass an 18, you know? I'm, I'm the type of dudes that prepared for tournaments where 99 uh, like, a 10 doesn't guarantee finals. <laughs> <laughs> like in in Europe, we used to you know be like the um, worst players on the planet or, <laughs> or things mm-hmm. like that, and um, the level of competition is actually quite decent. There's there's no comparison with uh, rip or other you know great tournaments in the US. But still, you have to be you got some people like, like isn't you have to be good in different uh, skills to uh, advance in tournaments because uh, last time I organized an FA tournament you had to you had to get 99s on 13s and 12s like quadding a 9 doesn't uh, guarantee you get into any kind of position really so yeah interesting um, yeah That's like cool. I, I really like um yeah, I feel like to play all the the contents that I uh, that I can enjoy. It's it's, it's just great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's so much of it. <laughs> it's it's so cool. There is. You'll know. You'll never like everyone could stop today, and you're still never gonna fucking run out. There's too yeah. much stuff. Yeah. Especially um, these days. Yeah. So I want to. Uh, which I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. You write a bunch of stamina charts. I do. Um, <laughs> oh, at least I did. Uh, <laughs> You did. So you, you released um, Eurobeat is Fantastic 2 recently, yep. like a month ago, I think, at this point. Um, so you included a readme that I might like throw up on the screen, mm-hmm. uh, but it sounded very much like a I'm going to be done with this type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, can you can you comment on that? Like, are you going to retire? Yeah. Uh, why do you feel now is an appropriate time to do so? Uh, your thoughts on that? I mean... Um... It's no secret that uh, I've been doing it for a long time and that I spent a gazillion hours doing it. So it's not that it lost the appeal uh, for me because I'm always happy to write new stuff. 
It's just um, some people need time in the spotlight these days. There's up and coming step artists that need a bit of attention. So I'd hmm. say that uh, my place right now is to do things that I'm the only one uh, doing. So marathons, mixes for the game, um, revisiting the genres that uh, I used to step in the past that I've been the only one doing so. Like flashcore, neurocore kind of stuff, or, you know, just... Um, I don't want to be uh, that one dude putting all the newcomers in it in his shadow, you know. Because um, young people need the time to shine, and I think my time is in the in the spotlight is maybe over. And what I want to do now is stuff that matters. So stuff that matters is uh, stuff these people can do, and stuff these people can do is basically like two things marathons and making music for marathons so i'm not mm -hmm. exactly done with uh stamina step charting because it it's a way of expressing myself so i really appreciate uh doing it in my free time because it allows me to express uh some kind of stuff that i can't express otherwise that i can't express otherwise so I'll, I'll always do it, more or less, like maybe <laughs> less than ever, maybe a file to a year mm. or, uh, yeah, you know, contributions that matters. That's that's about it. So contributions like your beat is fantastic too. They don't matter at all right now because there's lots of people doing fine packs that release every month or so. So I don't need to put myself in a position where I'm forced to do that. That's what I want to avoid, you know. Force me to do stuff, because it's always going to come bad if you force yourself to do stuff. Yeah. So I really want to enjoy the process of making it, which means I'm going to restrict my uh, field of action to the things that I really enjoy the most, which is, you know, like I said, marathons, doing music for marathons and all that. So yeah, mm. I'm not exactly retiring. Because, you know, I'm still judging this. I mean, it's okay, free. I'm done, but yeah, I'll, I'll judge the finals and I'll still yeah, provide feedback and I'm still yeah. an admin of Stamina Nation or whatever. But I still do things, mm -hmm. but I'll be uh, doing less stuff from now on. People, uh, I felt, you know, um, the weight of expectations on my shoulders for a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it it's <sucks>. a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing is like, I don't know, like you get to like a per like, like, I guess your level of involvement with the community, yeah. like where you're a judge or a moderator and stuff like that. And like, you're not, you're not getting paid for any of this. Uh, I mean, sometimes I do, but uh, it's really uh, rare. And uh, I'd say for the amount of hours that I spent since I started, it's not worth it. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Don't yeah, do it for the it's, money. It's, it's not going to do it's you a any lot good. Of, a lot of altruism is needed. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so I'm not done uh, 100%, but I'm done with things like 60 songs in a pack or even, yeah. you know, 20 marathons in a pack. I'm done with that. It, it's over. Oh, but no, that's that the occasional, the occasional, you know, marathon I made the music for or the marathon that I wanted to step or, you know, participating in stepping the ECS 9 or 10 or whatever marathon yeah. then. Yeah, for sure. But it's just... Um, I, I switched gears to music production and it's taking a lot more of my time so okay. I now enjoy that a bit more than uh, stamina step charting so I, I tend to mm -hmm. you know, spend my time making music instead but That's there's good. still like a few hours that I can put into stamina step charting per month and um, I really want to do it when I wrote that paragraph you know, in the readme I was like I'm actually really done like not gonna do anything next thing you know the months after i started writing a marathon be like oh that's cool <laughs> stuff yeah you know <laughs> I, I guess you, could, you cannot escape it you know i had a five-year break in the game and it didn't stop yeah. me <laughs> yeah i can't i i feel like uh you know because like at least like up until i don't know like 2012 or 2013 let's say uh 
you know, people would like consistently drop out of the community for life. But I feel like at this point, if you're still playing the game, you're you're kind of in it. <laughs> like you're not I mean, going anywhere. My friends are playing Vin's games. What am I gonna, what am I gonna do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't fight. It's, I, I cannot. Can't, I cannot fight it. it. Uh, I'm just gonna be doing it for a while. I don't know. Maybe in a few, like in a decade, we I'll have a different. Um, yeah, different saying about all this, but right now I don't think more, I'm more friends. getting out of it anytime soon. Like yeah, I mean, it's been a year since I last touched an ITG pad, like for real, because the arcade was closed a year, like a full year. Oh wow! Yeah, you're still doing. Needless to say, I, I start to you know get the chills uh, to tell me that I need to get to the pad and play some stuff. Especially, you know, after being done with so much of this as free, I was like, what if I'm totally disconnected with reality at this point? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned, uh, you mentioned about uh, newcomers that you think are, you know, like worthy of the spotlight. Mm. Uh, could you like mention a couple real quick? Sure. Um, not, not implying that if they're not mentioned, they're not worthy or anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of people that uh, needs to be mentioned. Uh, if you look at uh, the main ingredient results, we judged people like anonymously from the same chart, and some people come out came out like way on top of each of other people, like uh, Chief Skills Trevor that you interviewed. Um, Took also had uh, an amazing run in this tournament. There is, um, I think, you know, that's based on uh, what I felt from my uh, Samina Showcase free judging, but uh, Rajin also deserves mention. I 100% despise the music that uh, he does because it's just not my cup of tea at all. But, uh -huh. like, it looks promising. I'd say it looks promising. Mm -hmm. There's. Um, UT is also like pushing out tons of content these days and um, like I, I, I learned the other day it's pronounced Yutzi. Oh I'm sorry <laughs> Yutzi and uh, some of the music that he did um, we have some taste in common about you know, IDM uh, music and um, yeah, other other kind of music that he stepped because you know I was seeing that guy pushing like two packs a month al almost, and I was like, "There's no way this is gonna be any good," <laughs> like no way. Mm -hmm. Then I looked. Then you know I just some people in Stem in the Nation just pointed out to me that I was being you know, kind of disrespectful or. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't care. So I took my time, you know, it took an hour to look at um, UNC type beats. And it was surprisingly okay. There, is, there were even like things that I think would be good. Ian included them in ECS. So that's the sign you want to, you know, you want to look at if you, you want to know if it's good or not. The gold star. Yeah. Of uh, kind stamina. Of. Kinda. Yeah. Uh, he has lots of stuff in ECS, and uh, yeah, uh, as much as uh, I was and I'm still is in favor of doing a uh, less content but more quality, I think that dude deserves at least a mention. So yeah, also there's like tons of people releasing stuff, but I have zero time to check it out. So, but what we learned uh, with Ian, and I'm talking about behalf of Ian because we talked about it. Um. I found my stamina showcase results were pretty good. Um, not e not even you know in terms of uh, patterning because I'm not exactly allowed to express my opinions on that. But musically speaking, there 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 are some really interesting choices that are pushing the the game in uh, areas where. Uh, it, w it has never been before like some stuff in there is mind-blowing musically speaking and um, I'm gonna be able to see that in my review because I pointed out the, the music that I truly thought was uh, exceptional but yeah some people with good taste in music are doing more stuff these days and uh, I'm very glad because um, it's a music game remember 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the music. So if if you ever choose good mm -hmm. music, then um, you're gonna be able to you know have a lot to work with. So yeah, definitely. I feel like the young generation, the people I posting in Stimulation Nation all the time, like. I almost forgot, you know, Starry Sargol also that uh, has been producing content, even re-steps of things I made are pretty okay. And um, definitely a new a new batch of step artists that I think deserve mention that I said before. Um, and yeah, but still, just, you know, to put that out there, they're not there yet. There are still things to be improved uh uh, on the content of these people, Trevor, I think, is the closest to being on par with um, what the rest of us are expecting. You know, like uh, people are, that that have been stepping stamina for a long time. But yeah, people are getting there, and it's uh, I really want to encourage those people to keep going because um, there is definitely a few people are going in the right direction, at least for me. So mm. yeah, uh, and like outside of these people, um, keep practicing. It's the most important things you uh, you you want to do is keep practicing. If people say your files are bad, then it's not a big deal. You always have room to improve. Just do it. Look at what other people are doing and um, figure out what works. Figure out what you like and do things that you like. And uh, that way, there's not a lot you can do to be in the wrong again. That that's about it. That's uh, what everyone uh, that has succeeded in the genre of uh, stamina step trying will say to you: take feedback, adjust according to feedback, and try to do stuff that you like. You're gonna find an audience, no matter what. So you've been doing. Um music production not lately but for a while um is there anything you want to sure. i guess talk about there yeah uh, sure how is dance like are these influenced by dance games or are you doing something completely different with it sure um uh, this is this is complicated because i've been music uh, i've been making music before i really play dance games so i don't feel like it is influenced by dance game at all or i would be doing something that would be more attractive to people playing dance games uh, like genres such as uh, freeform hardcore or j core or whatever but um i'm not doing any of that i'm actually going in a completely different direction because uh music game uh, i play music games because i like the music but i like all music if you, if you come to my house and um we spend i don't know 48 hours or 72 hours together you're gonna see I listen to all kind of stuff and um, dance game music is actually a category of what I listen to and um, my priority with the music I make is uh, I want to get gigs to play at parties so that I can play tunes that I played in rhythm games <laughs> 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 so yeah um, like I'm doing techno music which is uh, more repetitive and more dull to people that are used to uh, things happening every two seconds, or I yeah, don't know. like some new little riff, because so, like you're 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 playing the game for like a minute thirty or like a sure. stamina song or something like that. You're not used to sitting in the club for an hour, mm. you know. But yeah, just trying to if dance. if you've never been to a club, I, I highly encourage you to do so one day in your life. Like go to a proper techno party without drugs. That uh, drugs are bad. <laughs> Drugs are bad for you. Alcohol is also bad for you. <laughs> it's so, it, it's all bad for you. It's also very easy to fall down the hole. Uh, you sure. know, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh man!" Especially just a little in techno bit of music, dude. Like, um, yeah, yeah I, I am sober since like on those things. I didn't take any of those like since day one because I'm not interested in that. Interested in that, but you gotta admit there's some kind of mag magic that happens when people are submitted to a five minute loop mixed with another five minute loop for hours yeah. it does things to your brain that you gotta respect and that's the music i want to do right now i mean maybe not as dull as a five minute loop right but uh you know i'm, I'm starting to get there in terms of production and uh you know in terms of uh, actually knowing what making music is like 
so I'm starting mm-hmm. to have tracks that uh, feel decent for professional releases and uh, but yeah that's totally disconnected from the reality of uh, dance games where um, you want to find songs that are exciting interesting high in energy this is not the kind of stuff that I do and that's fine okay. but yeah uh, to link the two together what uh, what I've been thinking is the more I uh, go in depth when with the uh, music production the more proficient I am with uh, thinking about uh, what parts of a song uh, uh, is a hit and what part of a song is like not great, which means that uh, I am more proficient at doing cuts and uh, pe- and you know putting the pieces together in a marathon when I'm doing the music is because now I consider you know uh, I stopped thinking uh, in the context of you know what it's going to be like outside of dance games I just think the chart for the game I think the music for the game and if you think the music for the game then the chart is going to be like exactly how you thought you know it, it was going to be you just need to be aware of the music production stage and you know the, um, piecing the song together what it's going to be mm-hmm. like in the chart and that's a skill that I picked up uh, with music production because um, with music production you, you're you setting yourself in the position of someone in a club listening to your music and uh, when you do stuff for the game you're sitting in the position of someone who's playing the game so you, you're able to you know um, put your mind in a certain context and uh, take decisions according to that context uh, which explains the differences there is uh, between, you know, I made three ECS mixes so far. Uh, the difference in break time during the entire song between 7, 8 and 9. The break time goes down as far as, you know, the additions of ECS go. Cause yeah, it's, it's the worst. <laughs> I know, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the chart when I do the marathon, you know, in my digital audio workstation I, I just look at it and be like what is it gonna be in the chart and then I imagine myself playing the chart and that's why the last one has so few breaks because I was like hmm this th- there doesn't need to be a break in the chart here so <laughs> just let, let's just remove it <laughs> no I mean, now we need more breaks, not less breaks. To be fair, like if you want two minutes of backstory about it, uh, the last one I started, you know, I always send Ian some prototypes of versions that I do before it's the final release. And the first prototype was uh, one hour and forty minutes. So I was looking at it, and 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 I I told myself nobody's gonna play that ever. <laughs> so I just no. decided to cut that down. So I, I removed a few songs, I removed a few break mm-hmm. moments where I didn't feel it was worth to have a break. And then, you know, magically it came down to 90, then 80, then 75. Which means that, uh, musically speaking, I felt listeners fatigue 45 minutes in. It's really dense and there's no break time for your ears so it's kind of beginning to sound like blobs of sounds and Mm -hmm. you deserved a break in your listening experience but in your playing experience I don't feel like there was a need for that so I just didn't do it (laughs) you sure about that? I need my wrists need it (laughs) (laughs) sure I've been also thinking about uh, rest times a lot more these days because I've been an advocate for you know not having marathons that are one hundred percent run because injury what? injuries risks are pretty high yeah. if you cannot cool down for a second and people yeah. get badly hurt for a long time because a lot, they a lot of people because they a cannot they cannot you know just stop playing the game so they keep playing injured and they get worse. I've yeah. been in that case before. 
Yeah. It's also like a lot of times you don't realize you're like slowly injuring yourself. You yeah. think it's just like a muscle ache mm-hmm. or something like that. It just slowly gets worse. Oh no, there's someone like someone who actually like knows physical therapy and like stamina, which there's nobody. No one has that like overlapping skill set. Mm-hmm. Uh, needs to like come in and be like, this is how you don't ruin your body while playing yeah. this game. Like the limit is getting uh, thinner and thinner. The higher you go in difficulty, like uh, you're able to push yourself harder and harder. So you're not uh, mm-hmm. exactly in the position of telling yourself if you're actually enjoying yourself or if you're being a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so this one is uh, the first chart. It is from the pack. Uh, omelette du fromage. <laughs> omelette du fromage. Uh, or omelette. Omelette. Yeah. Uh, okay. Don't worry. It's not, it's, not, it's not easy to pronounce anyway. Uh, yeah. Basically, okay, it's a yeah, packet that... I made like 2016. Because at the time mm-hmm. I was in Spain and I was like, yeah, what, what if we do a pack with uh, French step artists that are literally unknown to the public? Uh-huh. And at the time, it was, I thought, like, yeah, it's a great idea, let's go. And then um, we just compiled everything we had, some people did stuff, and then, you know, I was in oh. my uh, Max 300 uh, MGH, you know, time where I used to meme about stuff all the time. So, it's interesting yeah. it's interesting that you say this because like you say this is like oh all unknown uh french step artists but mm-hmm. like I, I recognize like okami sure uh stripe or strippy yeah. i don't know how to pronounce yeah. that stripe yeah. uh you i've heard of beno cat but yeah. i don't know too much um yeah also this is it's interesting because these people are uh like more known now yep yeah, at the time we were total nobodies, and nobody was expecting that. And even I wasn't expecting like the success of this pack had. It, people still play it. It's so mm. bad. <laughs> like we I'm were uneducated. Too. Let's say, let's put it that way, uneducated. <laughs> this is Captain Streams, a remix of Captain Jack. <laughs> uh, I think I think it's Grand Dale mix or something like that. Yeah. That's uh, it. DDR classic. So I'm gonna just reel loudly for sync. So yeah, uh, this is uh, something that I made in 2016. I was uh, toying around, looping parts of songs. I made, I made uh, a remix of What a Color that's not out. That's just looping the 32 measures of the chorus, which is called What. <laughs> It's, I'm, I'm it, loving those towers. <laughs> I had no idea, but like right there, you can tell. I had already an idea of what I was supposed to do. So what I did is uh, I had a section of hard patterns and a section of easy patterns that I just, you know, chained through. Like one easy, one hard, one easy, one hard. And I was fine with it. And I had no idea of what left right direction were i just had an idea of what patterns were difficult for me and what and uh, some others that were not yeah. so what you get is like a, a four measures of patterns that i think that are easy for me and a four measure of yeah. patterns that are hard for me like chain what? for 64 measures when did this come out 2016 like, like 2016. i think it was 14th july because it was a uh, national national day for france so i i had to make the joke okay. but yeah you can see also that uh when it alternates between uh parent difficulties you get a hold which is something that is still trademarked in my style when things are changing and i want you to look at it there's usually yeah. a hold or two that uh, need to catch your attention Needless okay. to say, it's been like three or four years I'm, since I, I looked at this, and it's okay-ish. <laughs> it, it's a lot of, you know, uh, it's got uh, boxes and anchors, the no-no patterns today. Oh my uh, god, But yeah. no, in, in general, like, if I, if I was playing this, like, with FA form, um, I, I think I'd have fun with it. I played worse I, things more recently yeah. than that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah. For, for the joke, I was just, uh, I like the song, oh, that's a double slip. 
I was I was it's okay, very, it's in the eighth notes. I was very notorious for having double step in my charts when I started. Like if you ask Okami or, or other French people about that, I had like a gazillion uh, double steps per chart. Oh my god, that's so stupid. <laughs> Oh, you, you, when he says left, it's on the yeah, left. Yeah, you arrow. go left. Yeah, that, that was cute. That's good. Uh, I, I That's was, good. I was funny, dude. That's a, that's a very <laughs> good uh, attention to detail. And, and I was a part of the loop because I liked it. Here jumps. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I still <laughs> I laugh love about it because it. <laughs> Jeez, it, it's oh, you, know, you know some people's old charts are really embarrassing. I'm not feeling embarrassed by this. It's it was it's it was a funny idea on paper. It's yeah, no, it's because it's a meme, right? Like uh, that, that, definitely like, that's, for the people getting into it, make a meme first, like a, like, like a semi-serious meme. Then you can claim irony. You or know, whatever. there's ver something very interesting you can note about this is that uh, if you first enjoy ironically some stuff. If you still uh, listen or do it, like, ironically, you're gonna like it, unironically. That's what it, that's what happens with, like, a high-tech Psytrance. I liked it for the memes, but then I really liked it for no reason. There's, like, tons of other stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, actually, they, they say that irony is just uh, doing something and deflecting Look at that stuff. yourself from, like, the uncool image. <laughs> oh, this is a stop. Hell, it's a great Yes! Stop. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's basically it. I, it's just a copy paste all over it. But yeah, it's you know I was a creative dude back then. I, I do like Captain Jack screaming "Go!" into my ear for like thirty seconds straight. It, it was, was um, also I I played. Um, oh my god! If you remember this, you're like MVP. I remember Gangnam Streams. Gangnam Style? I know Gangnam Style. Gangnam I don't know Style, Gangnam I had a chart that is stamina, that's like a 12. Gangnam Streams oh. is that chart stream section for 12 minutes. Jesus. That That's like a baby Ocean Lab. And I played this a few times, and I was like, what, what, why can I do the exact same thing? I remember now, that's the backstory behind this one. It's, it's because I play Gangnam Streams, and I was like, oh my god, this is so cool, I need to do one. And I did. <laughs> that, that's so weird, because nobody ever heard of that, but if you Google or YouTube search Gangnam Streams, you're gonna find stuff. You're gonna find people playing it, but I don't even know if that crossed uh, the Atlantic Ocean. I don't even think... People in the U.S. played it. I don't even remember. I don't even know where this came from. I don't, yeah. I don't even know that it existed. But I also didn't play stamina for a while. I actually, you know, I'm kind of new to the stamina community. <laughs> so yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, I should do the same with the Captain Streams, uh, Captain Jack, and that's what I did. That, that's why I found it was so funny. Oh God. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you can see in this one, there's like a few things that are already. Are my train mic today is uh, holes that are indicating something that is not especially visible to everyone, and yep. yeah, some some of the stuff is like uh, not stepping to the music because this is not this is not it. This is kind of oof in that department. It's it's, it's getting there. It, it it seems like like you knew. Yeah, like, like like you said, you knew which parts were easy, which parts were hard. Yeah, I, I know what, kind of what's easy for me and what's hard for me. That's about it. That's about uh, where I stand it in that place in time. Uh, this one came uh, quite late in uh, the PAX development. There's some old, older stuff in it that's like really not good and really not as uh, thought out at this, as this one. But yeah, this mm -hmm. one is when I started getting, you know, into the idea of the music. The music is doing something. I need to do. I need to do something to reflect that in the chart. Mm hmm. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, let's look on to the next one. Uh, so this one is called "Return of Forever," and this oh, yeah. is from Stamina Showcase One. Uh, oh I my believe. god! Yeah. Yeah, it's one. Oh my god. This one was like 2018, right? 
Uh, I, I can't remember. It's it's like after that, after that first pack, but not alone after that one. Okay. So this one, yeah, this one, yeah, is that. Um, is there anything you want to say about the chart before we go into it? Yeah, I revisited that one in uh, the Get Streams one, I I guess. Um, that that version is better, but um, if I was to do it again right now, I think I would be even better than the restart that I did. So yeah, okay. um, this one is the, oh. like the early early version. Like okay. if you if you remember if you remember a few things about it uh, in the competition, Ian gave it like a decent good grade, and uh, Zaya and At At, uh, I think they they gave it like I don't remember, but like nine out of twenty or like less than average. It 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 is one seventy three BPM, which by then was probably mm -hmm. kind of. Eh, there are people probably didn't like it too much, but yeah, let's uh, let's start it. So it, it didn't. First things first, you see end. there's uh, some bleeding holes, like some holes that are overlapping with each other. That's not something I do, and that's something that I really don't like in other people's charts nowadays. Okay. And yeah. It it's also really started good right away. Yeah, definitely. I have no time. Like basically here. Oh my god, yeah, I, I can I can see what I did there. You know, when the sound's playing, you get like, you go to one side and the other one, you know, like, as, as much as possible. Oh, okay. like, gotcha. And, and to, to... Oh jeez. Oh my god, that's so awkward. Oh, <laughs> oh that's Ooh, not bad. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's pricey. You see, huh? that little hole, like to to crash on the drum kit, it's there. Okay. But yeah, I had zero care for what was happening in that session. Here in that section, I was more like try to go easy and try to put anchor to some key sounds, but uh, it wasn't as uh, precise as. Uh, the most recent version, but yeah, you can see it. I'm, I'm trying to start by easy patterns. Okay. And uh, yeah, I had zero care for what was happening in the little breaks like this. But yeah, basically I was trying to follow the voice. I was trying to make an impression. Like the uh, Yeah, like I was really yeah. trying. Yeah. Okay. Cause, cause like, gotcha. uh, this is the first time in a fall where I actually tried. Okay. Oh my god, that section's so good. The music is really good. Um, yeah, no, this this song's great so far. I I, ha I have that on on vinyl. I bought it because you know I, I saw it in the in the shop and I was like, oh my god, I stepped this. I should buy it. <laughs> that that yeah. did. Oh yeah. If, you know, if people if people visit when you put it on, uh, you can say mm -hmm. I stepped this. You see, like. When the voice is playing, I try to put more candles to it, but in a very a mature way, because I didn't know what I was doing, but you know, you get the idea when the voice is repeated, then you get higher patterns. Okay. Like, you know, these anchors, they were tied to the saxophone, but I had to, you know, I should have changed size. Like, here you see, everything is tied to the bass line. In, in, uh -huh. a, in, a, in really, like, crude way and uncomfortable. But you see, what? the Luchis are going to the to the baseline, because okay, I, I, I thought that that was what was interesting in the show. And okay. you see, every time the baseline is doing something, and here you see the voice is playing again, so I'm putting some spirals. Okay, so it, the, here you're, you're you're taking more like instruments and saying like, okay, when this yeah. instrument happens, it's a spiral. When this instrument happens, it is a luchi. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was really trying hard to, you know, make sense of the whole thing and be like, see, hold again. This one was kind of unnecessary, but, you know, I, I thought it makes sense at the time. You see these long anchors is when the bass line plays like multiple notes in, at the same time. And I was very proud because I felt like, yeah, this is, this is the shit. This is, this is really clever. I, and, um, uh -huh. you know, when I received the result for this one, I was really depressed 
like uh, I was I was looking at the results and be like, hey, you see the the voice inflections here, the box here, box box, and the same one, box here it, it's oh, or it goes whatever box box, box. box. Like, yeah okay here you no, see okay, it? I see you it, see it? I see it. Box, box. And, yeah. and, 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 and you know, it, it was in my head. I was like, oh, I'm doing great shit. I like this. And when I received the result, I was gutted. It was, it was not at all what I expected. Next section is very interesting in how I felt uh, things were supposed to be done back then. Like, if you look at it, okay. there's like a hole. This one? One direction, hold another direction. Synced to the... Um, the, the lead synth that's going in the background. Oh, okay. And, and you see these holes now that I know my shit, these are unnecessary, like really. But yeah. at the time, I thought like, yeah, I need to tell those people that uh, I changed direction because of the synth. And then, you know, the um, breakbeat is coming back, so I just like resume normal stepping, but with additional uh -huh. changes of directions. I really fought hard about this one when I made it, but y you see that's exactly... That that kind of file would get a decent grade out of me in Stamina Showcase, because it has the ideas. You see when the, okay. the, the bass is repeating, there's like another repeat on the 8th notes here too. Mm -hmm. That's maybe the strongest section in, in the whole thing, but yeah. Basically I thought about it, and if you thought about what you did, but you did it in an improper way or the execution the execution is lacking then you're gonna get a good grade for me because I know you're thinking yeah. about this stuff and that's how you should do it because yeah some people think of, think of sounds and be like yeah this is that pattern and other people will put a completely different pattern on the same sound but still that will feel coherent because there's no rules the only rule yeah. is stay coherent in the entirety of your files and when you're mm -hmm. coherent across an entire array of different files and different music that's what we call style so yeah if, if you get if you if you are able to stay consistent between files on certain sounds you got what we call a style and we respect that yeah and and that that one is very interesting because it's like it's the birth of what my style is, like strong emphasis on left-right orientation, uh, sparkle, sparkles, or um, yeah. what I like to call them, you know, little mi micro holes or yeah. micro rolls or jumps or whatever. But yeah, this was really, you know, the birth of my style is right there, and it's it's super crazy because you know. When I received the results, Ian gave me a good grade, but the other two judges were not as positive as Ian, and that single positive grade just made me start my career, because I was like, if I can please this guy, then the, the with guy some works, I can please them all, and I can please yeah. myself. So it's super important that you, get, you, don't, you don't get stuck on negative feedback. Some people are going to like your stuff and play your stuff. So focus on the people yeah. that like what you do, and try to please them better. This is exactly what I did. Everything that I made, like from this one to 2019, was more or less to please the people that uh, have reviewed my work in this competition, which explains why it took so much from Zaya and and and, and Arki in in terms of um, step charting. It's because I wanted to please those guys. Because I wanted them, I wanted them to give me a good grade for the next competition. It didn't happen for two years, but yeah, I really wanted these guys to look at my work and be proud and be like, "Wow, this guy knows his stuff." And that's the energy yeah. I had. That's the energy I had for a lot of stuff I did, and and this one <laughs> is no exception. I wanted to look good. I wanted people to look at this and be like, "Yeah, this is this guy knows his shit." I didn't, okay. but I did my best. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's the thing. You can only do your best, and then you know next time try to do better. Yeah, that, that's you know that's it's it's. Um, I mentioned that one to you because this is where it started. Yes. Like people think about my history back in Oblad du Fromage and all that, but at the time my career, you know, by uh, the time when I, when I actually took it like real seriously, 
was about the time that I made this one. When I made this one, I finished it. I sent it over. Then I got the result. And then I was like, mm, wow, I got lots of stuff to do to get better. And that's what I did. That's what I did. But this is the start. This is like the instrumental uh, pivot point of my whole, you know, works. This is, this is it. This is it. You got all the ideas that I still follow today and expressed in a way that doesn't make much sense, but they're here. And mm -hmm. uh, you'll never be uh, looked down upon if you have the ideas, but not the execution. If you have the execution, but not the ideas, your work is dull or redundant. If you have the ideas, but you don't have the execution, that's called French Coast Stamina 2. <laughs> 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 that's funny yeah that's that, good. That. I, I, I definitely agree like you gotta you gotta keep trying because like any, anyone like if you look even at like famous artists like their magnum opus or like their best works it's never their first 20 40 things that they've done it's it's always way the fuck down the line like dude this, this is a life principle that uh, I follow every day for things even that are not dance game related. People did not build planes by started with a full, you know, full free, 300 passengers um, thing able to travel Stewardess the continents. They started and by. And make food on it and Yeah, show they, you they started by putting wings on bikes. <laughs> <laughs> like what are you gonna do if you want to progress you're gonna make stuff that's not good and then accept that it's not and then improve upon it and that's it if you do like if you one up yourself every time you're gonna end up in a spot where your work feels good i guarantee it and that's that works mm -hmm. for everything for music for dance games for life everything you cannot start and expect something to be perfect you have to try it and most people yeah. forget that uh, you have to try a lot and fail and when you succeed and when you're as accomplished as some of us are uh, some of the most precious um, some of the most precious material is actually negative feedback and things you failed because you feel like it's so easy to succeed then when you fail something it means something really crucial and that you have to take yeah. this into account People just forget that, but yeah, you, I, you look at when, how it started and now where I am. You, you can do it. You just have to put your mind to it and work a lot. Yep. Work and time makes or yep. break a lot of things. Absolutely. I, could, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Ooh. So this next one, uh, this is Made of Fire, and this is out of uh, Eurobeat. It's fantastic, too, the, the one... Uh, I, you, you might be familiar, it just came out a month yep. ago. Yeah, uh, forward to this. Um, mm, this is this is complicated, because uh, I've been watching, you know, uh, I played the Doom games a lot. Like, I played uh, Doom 1, Doom 2, Doom 64, whatever. Doom 2016, and then when I played Doom, Doom 2016, the music was amazing. And then, you know, this this dude that made the music, that's the name, name is Mick Gordon. He made a few videos about uh, his creative process with um, writing the songs for Doom 2016. And he said something that's gonna be written forever in my head, is that when you're uh, working on the sequel of a classic, you're gonna treat the original with your most respect. And stepping this one was really difficult because I had to think about how not to make it into something that would disrespect the original. Which is why in this specific file you're going to see the streams are more broken up than anything else in the pack. Why? Because the original one was broken up. And you cannot expect people to like this one if it does not feel uh, respectful of the other one, like the keyboard charts or whatever charts that were made, because there was a 12 for uh, it. I think Mute did it or Tyler or 
Like, yeah, when when you when you say the original chart, do you mean like a different stamina chart or like the keyboard chart? Like or, both. You... There there were two. There okay. were one that was made by uh, I don't remember, but maybe it was Mute or Tyler. I don't. Uh, Gasbo. I think it was Gasbo actually. Like really really old one, and there was a keyboard chart to it, and I was like, um, redoing this one. Um, more or less adding my piece to already written history so how do i yeah. make it so that it feels worth having if you make it like uh, like a standard eurobeat chart dumb streaming everything and copy pasting as much as you can it's not gonna feel right you have to treat the originals and the pre the previous charts with with respect and that's what came to my mind when i did this this was step towards okay. the end so it was maybe in the last 10 that I did for the pack. So I think it's like um, one of the most advanced advanced in, in the technique. But yeah, really, uh, if you remaster something, if you work on something people have uh, already done before, just make sure you, don't, you, you do it with respect. And uh, yeah, go make it scroll. Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were trying to... <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. I'm just, I'm just mumbling around. But yeah. Uh, okay. uh, oh, no, it's, it's good. Because, uh, yeah, no. Uh, this is not going to make me like smash my keyboard into the wall, right? <laughs> you see? Vocals. We hold. Yeah, I remember those. The, 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 dun, 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 dun. Yeah, these guys. Oh, so good. A bop. A visual bop. Yeah, the jumps also, you have to put some some in. Yeah. Voice repeats, there's boxes and everything. Vocal inflections are probably marked by uh, up-down, you know, or down-ups. Every time I couldn't put a jump, I, I, I put a hold, and that works. Also, the sync is, like, really fucking hard on this one. Does like, it, like, drift a lot? Oh my god, yeah. It does, because you know this this was made in the 90s, and uh, it's, you know they just jump cut everything in the studio after they made the recording. They don't care about um, the songs being fixed BPM or whatever. But you see, all the trademarks are here, like left right yeah. uh, emphasis, anchors, like this one. Mm. This is this is really mm -hmm. good. This is fun. Like left, right, left on vocal changes of pitches. Uh, everything's here. See, left, right. Repeat. Beautiful. Oh my god. You see, made of fire is good. Left, right, left all the time. And and, and then yeah. you see that these notes will go like longer. So I make staircase and then reverse and then staircase and reverse in the other side. And and you see uh, when the vocal goes higher in pitch, then you got more difficulty in it, and that's great. That's how I do stuff now. And and now also that um, the BPM is like 155, so you can go really hard uh, in terms of patterning. You can do whatever you want because uh, you just have to take care of the flow. Uh, it needs to flow well. Yeah. Yeah. No one can, can complain about like the bad pattern in one. Yeah, every time the Actually, vocal is... Actually, even if you have crossovers, yeah, it'll still be fine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so every time just... the vocal goes, like, way up way up in pitch, you get, you get an anchor, like a three-hour anchor on one side. Oh my god, that's banger, so good! Banger, banger song, too. That's so good. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, oh, uh, when stepping this one... Uh, the, the previous one I was just like, yeah, let's do Night of Fire with 30 times, and this one I was like, way more picky about what kind of songs I was gonna do, so I really developed uh, the Orbit culture, and yeah, there's nothing like Nico's songs, really. The producers mm -hmm. behind this one are fucking genius. Like, I don't know if you know it, but all the Eurobeat singers, they signed the track with their singer name, but the producers are credited elsewhere on the on the, um, the digital release or you know on the vocal that you get with the CD. But like there's less than ten people involved with the genre that do every instrumental, and the people really? that are putting their name in the track are people singing all the time, all the time, and they're like 
90% from Italy. That's crazy. So yeah, here you see broken streams because pay respect to the original. I could have streamed through that easily, but I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And every time I got the occasion, breaking the streams to make it uh, more like the originals that I looked at. You, you took the opportunities. Yeah, okay. here I couldn't make it stream entirely, but I decided not to. Uh, because that's one of the things I do in Eurobeat in general, is that the quietest section where there's a verse like this doesn't have stream. Mm -hmm. Drums, yes, I really love these. This was challenging, mind you, because you know uh, I was I was writing like three files a day, so I need to, I needed to make this one special. Yeah. So yeah, it's hard to make something special if you're doing it like twelve yeah, times a day. Definitely. Oh, this is so good. Yeah. See. Crash on the drums, yeah, no. holds. I have to see that. I see the holds. Yeah. The classic rims. That that's my style. People usually look at me, look at my phone, be like, "Oh, that's him," because side anchors and micro holds and left right emphasis on literally everything. That's my style. <laughs> I like to do it. So yeah, this this one is really good. This is one of you know the things that I did in the second opus that I'm the most proud of because I felt like this is respectful of the original while adding mm -hmm. something different that people would like and um, I would not say like this is my top one file in terms of patterning I don't even know what that's what that is but yeah this one definitely feels like a 9 out of 10 easily because everything is at the right spot for me in my head and everything's like emphasized properly and this is um, me following the blueprint I created for the genre that's something also that's really key it's that of the maybe like uh, 120 Eurobeats stamina songs that are in the market today I made like 90 of those yeah so uh, you, you kind of put the genre to rest honestly yeah it, it was the last one i'm not i'm not <laughs> planning on doing the third one because you know mind you i challenge you to find 30 songs that are great in super eurobeat that i did not do and i didn't appreciate <laughs> if you do it then maybe we can talk but trust me i'll listen to dozens of hours of tracks to make this one and they were really selected in a way that everyone would feel uh, at least decently interesting because in what i did not when i did not step uh among those things there are a lot of stuff that feel either redundant or not on par uh, in terms of production on the music or um, I done it before. <laughs> I did it before, basically. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not to be you know megalomaniac about the, these kind of things. But um, in in the the ITG community, I'm I'm I, I might be among the most knowledgeable about uh, the whole genre, and uh, also I get um, a pretty specific taste and what I like in the genre yeah so also from, finding, from my I find, light searching yeah. it doesn't seem like there's that much going on in the genre yeah uh it seems like pretty small these days it's dead like 100 percent. like no not really it was dead like two or three years ago because super eurobeat they stopped at compilation 250 so there's no more super eurobeat compilation coming out in japan japan was the primary market for eurobeat so now that the market's gone there's no incentive to do it again but some people like dave rogers the people at scp music fast way go to uh how's it called i don't know pamzy like lots of people that were featured uh, on the scp label uh are coming back to make uh some more music okay this one Eurobeat Kudos 2020. It's like all the people that uh, were working with the, the studio SCP Music, they came back um, for one more, one, more, um, one more CD. And you got um, Screen Team, they did uh, Cookie Spooky. Maybe you're familiar with it. 
Ace, uh, I think, Iran, I think Way, what... Go to Hot Blade, Dusty, Pamzy, all, all uh, lots of uh, people known in the Eurobeat scene. They they did this one. They crowdfunded it. I bought it. And uh, yeah, uh, some small subsets of producers and singers are still going at it because they know their time of fame uh, is gone, but they still want to do it for the people that are still here for the music, like myself and other Eurobeat fans, because they, they noticed on the internet that the Young Guns, Chorbo, Eurobeat Brony or Odyssey or whatever, Anthony McBazooka, <laughs> <laughs> so these three people they have videos with like hundreds of thousands of views that are from post 2017 so th the people in the studio were like mm, seems like the genre is popular again should we make another one and then they did like Dave Rogers remastered tons of his old shit that I included mm -hmm. in this one timely release because i was looking for more songs so i was like mm, these guys are doing new stuff and it's good they they primarily just remake the mixes so they sound modern uh some songs are new but i don't think they're really great but yeah whatever there's new eurobeat content but very small subset of people and uh, a very small number of releases like scene uh, was dead few years ago seems like youtube memes and uh people like turbo and uh, uh anthony big bazooka and the other one uh yuri brony they they um kind of brought the genre back back uh, t to popularity so the people that used to make this kind of songs they 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 smelled the opportunity and i think they uh, they released great stuff you can visit the um, scp music Bandcamp if you're you know really interested in that they have tons of remasters and uh like little gems from their back catalog if you're really interested in it, in it now is the time to be because <laughs> uh the genre was uh i don't think it was more alive uh before like from 2016 to now uh, i think the genre is more alive than ever in that period so that's that's a great time to be a ruby fan yeah very cool definitely that's cool that's that's like cheesy music but good <laughs> oh i do i love it I have, a, I have a friend who like uh kind of just like hates music well he doesn't hate music he likes music but he doesn't like a lot of like the new you know electronic music and all that stuff but he like runs to Eurobeat and fucking loves Eurobeat. yeah you have to accept uh, that it's cheesy as fuck and then yeah, it's that's... like full enjoyment you know yeah, like it's once, gonna yeah. be like double cheese, triple cheeseburger, whatever. But yeah, yeah it's, no, it's, it's good. It's it's really good. It's so much fun. And uh, trust and like... me, and trust me, if you're a music producer out there, listen to what they did recently. You're gonna see the power of production because this is kick pattern, like baseline pattern in minor all the time. Some dude singing. And one melody synth with some dumb lyrics, and it works. This is the lyrics smallest subset of shit. elements <laughs> you can have together in a track and make it work. Right. So listen to mm. that shit, and you're going to learn like a ton. Production and effort are everything. So, uh, Rems... Where can we find uh, your charts? Where can we find your music? Where can we contact you? Drop all the links. Yeah, um, basically for music, I've been kind of secretive about all that stuff because uh, I don't know if you people are interested in it since it is, it's very different and not very dance game focused. But uh, I'm going to drop the link in the description. But I'm on SoundCloud uh, and SoundCloud profiles rems lil L I double L E. You can find me on Instagram at uh, rems underscore px because uh, that's the crew I'm working with right now. Uh, you can mm -hmm. find me on Discord. You can PM me. I'm uh, I'm hanging out in Stamina Nation pretty much all the time since I'm moderating the content there. You can find me on Facebook as well if you want to. Uh, not accepting p invites from people I don't know. 
sorry but that's the rule if you want to contact okay. me and you don't know me discord is the better place to do that mm -hmm. and also got a youtube uh rams itg where you can find all my back catalog of mixtapes and uh, some rare instances of me playing actually playing the game oh uh, yeah, that's exciting uh, yeah because i actually played the game you know <laughs> <laughs> And I also also an ITG player. Who would have guessed? I, who would have guessed? I also played the game at a decent level. And um, yeah, that, that's about it. I get a Twitter, but I don't think it's worth mentioning since I just retweet a bunch of stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. But um, yeah, that that's that's about it for the the links. I'm not a very um, I used to be very exuberant online, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not these days because there are other things to do in real life. Who the fuck has time? But yeah, you can always contact anymore. me and talk about stuff. I'm I'm always happy to, um, you know, talk with strangers about dance games. That's always exciting. <laughs> Hell yeah! So yeah, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Really appreciate it. And shout outs to all the people following me and uh, no specific names because like they would. The videos would be like three hours but uh, like thank you for your continual support i really appreciate it. you're the you're the reason why i keep doing stuff so yeah thank you for your support and uh yeah see ya